Hi guys, and welcome to our One Step Equations review video. Remember, this is just if you need to have a little bit of questions or you forgot how to do One Step Equations. Okay, so remember an equation is different from an expression, right? An, equa an equation has an equal sign, which means that x only has one true value, okay? So when you're talking about equations, you're talking about equality, which means this side is equivalent to that side. So basically what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to get this number right here, the variable, you want to isolate it, which means you want to get it by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called inverse operations, which means if you have a positive 4 here, in order to get rid of it, you're going to use the inverse, which is a negative 4. And because it's an equation, if you do something over here, you have to do the same thing to the other side, otherwise it won't be equal. So you subtract 4 from there. X just comes down by itself. 4 minus 4 is 0, so I'm not going to put anything here. And then 7 minus 4 is 3. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that x equals 3, which means if I plug in 3 for x up here, so I get 3 plus 4 equals 7. And because that's a true statement, we know that this is the correct answer. Okay? So in this second example, basically the same thing. The only differences are we have the numbers on the other side of the equal sign and the variables on the opposite side that it was over here. Okay, same rules though. You still want to isolate this number. So the inverse operation of a positive 9 is now a negative 9. And remember, if you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other. Okay, so 9 minus 9 is 0, and we're just going to carry down our... Z. And here's where your integer rules come, in, come into play, which you should have been getting pretty good at based on the polynomial. So you have a negative 3 plus a negative 9, which gives you <coughs> a negative 12. So basically what we're saying is that Z is equal to negative 12. And if I go back here and plug it in, I have negative 3 equals negative 12. Again. Negative 12 plus 9, and we know that negative 12 plus 9 gives us 3. Okay, so that's addition, and we're going to move on to subtraction. Okay, okay so now we're on to one-step subtraction equations. You do this the exact same way as you did the addition. The only difference is that now you're subtracting a number from your variable, but you're still going to follow the same rules. So we're going to do inverse operations here. So if we have a negative 6 here, the inverse of that is going to be positive 6, and remember, if we're doing something to one side, we have to do it to the other. Okay? Negative 6 plus 6, these cancel each other out and give you 0. Y just carries down. Then you have negative 3 plus 6, which following our integer rules is equal to 3. Okay? And then you always want to go back and check your work, so we know that negative 3 is equal to negative, oops, excuse me, is equal to 3 minus 6. If you take 6 away from 3, you end up with negative 3. So we know that that works. Okay, our second one, same thing. We have x minus 7 equals 61. You're going to do the inverse operation to get x all by itself. So the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. And when you're doing these, it's important that you show your work like this and see that you're actually doing the same thing to both sides. So do it in your head. So x just stays the same. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And we know that 61 plus 7 gives us 68. And to prove that that's true, we're going to plug that in. So 68 minus 7 equals 61. So we have a true statement there, so we know that that's correct. Okay. Adding and subtracting are fairly simple. Now we're going to move on to uh, multiplying and dividing, which aren't very difficult either, but they're just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've done adding and subtracting. Now we're going to do... Do you have questions for you? Or are you just watching? No, just watching. Okay, you're fine. Alright, so now we're going to do one step multiplication equations. And the ones before we were either adding or subtracting the variable from the variable. And here you notice 3 sitting right next to that x. That's the same thing as 3 times x equals 21. Don't forget that this means multiplication. Okay? So remember we talked about inverse operations. Since we're multiplying here, in order to get rid of what's next to the variable, you have to do the inverse operation. And you guys all know that the opposite or inverse of multiplication is division. Okay? Because what happens here is if you have 3 and you divide it by 3, you get 1. 
okay? And that basically takes care of this and leaves x by itself. But here, remember, if I divide this side by 3, I also have to divide that side by 3, okay? So the 3 divided by 3, this cancels out to give you 1, and then 1 times x is just x, and 21 divided by 3 is 7, okay? Same thing, you're going to go back and you're going to plug it in, so you would get 3 times 7 is equal to 21, and we know that 21 equals 21, so that is a correct statement, okay? Now, this one is exact, exactly the same. The only difference is that the variable is on the right side of the equal sign, but it doesn't change what you do. Your goal is still to get this x all by itself to isolate the variable. So same thing, we're multiplying here. This is 6 times x. So in order to get rid of multiplication, you do the inverse, which is division. So you divide this side by 6, and don't forget you need to divide this side by 6. Okay? So these 6's are going to cancel out to be 1, and we're left with just 1x on the top. And then we have 15 over 6. Now I know you guys see it as a fraction, and you're kind of freaking out. But remember we talked about when you're doing algebra a lot of times, you just want to leave it as a fraction. Okay? And what I would suggest even on this is you could still simplify 15, at 15 over 6 because they both share a common factor of 3. So 3 goes into 15 5 times, 3 goes into 6, 2. So x is equal to 5 over 2. Okay? So these are the same thing right here. Okay? And you would do the same thing as far as going back and checking your work. Okay? So if I, let me go ahead and erase... If I take this answer here, and I'm going to plug it in to see if it works. Okay, so I've got 15 is equal to 6 multiplied by x is 5 over 2. Okay, now if I use my fractions, multiplying fraction rules, I know that I can put the 6 over the 1, right? So I end up with 15 equals 6 times 5 is 30, 1 times 2 is 2. And we know that 30 divided by 2 is 15, so that works out, okay? All right, so now we're going to move on to the one that's a little bit trickier for people, and that is the division, okay? I know you see this and you freak out because you see the little fraction bar, but remember, all we're doing is the inverse operation, okay? So here what's happening is this says x divided by 4 is equal to 3, right? Some number divided by 4 is going to give us 3, okay? So because this is being divided, the inverse operation of division is multiplication. So that means if we're dividing by 4, I want to go ahead and multiply this side by 4. And I'm going to put it over 1 because I'm just trying to make sure that my numerators and my denominators stay together. And if I multiply this side by 4, I need to multiply this side by 4. So just like in the other problem, my 4 divided by 4 turns into 1, and all I have is x all by itself, x over 1. And 3 times 4 is 12. And if we go back and plug it in to see if it works, we end up with 12 over 4 is equal to 3. And we know that 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So that works as well. Okay? And our last one, right, exactly the same. If you notice, these are all the same. All you're doing is changing the numbers. Okay? So we have variable divided by 6. So remember the opposite or the inverse of division is multiplication. So that means I'm going to multiply this side by 6. And if I multiply this side by 6, I have to multiply that side by 6. Okay? The 6's cancel each other out. And I'm left with a and 6 times 24 is 144. So what we would do is we'd go back in and plug it in to make sure it works. So 24 is equal to 144 divided by 6. And I think I did my math right. Yep. So we know that 40, 144 divided by 6 is 24. So that means that this is the correct answer. Okay? Um, and like I said, this is just a quick review on basic equations. You've been doing these for a couple of years. Hopefully you have a good handle on it. We're going to move on to two-step equations um, the next day and multi-step equations after that. So as long as you have a firm grasp of this, I think you'll be okay. Have a good night.